Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. So here's another old article. Salon in February of 2014 sought to rehabilitate communism's image before the pendulum could swing back against their lunacy. This is seven misconceptions about communism and capitalism. I love lists so much. They make things so easy for me. So anyways... Let's do this. Only communist economies rely on state violence. Uh, uh, are you serious? Who would argue this? It doesn't matter if the societies entrapped by the state are capitalistic, fascistic, socialistic, agrarian, or, I don't know, helium-based economies. The state itself is violence. So Salon.com is correct. Communists aren't the only ones who use state violence. At least they have the decency to acknowledge taxation as violence. Then again, they also say taxation is economic justice, which it's not. It's theft. Violence isn't justice. At best, violence is vengeance. More interesting is Salon's lack of understanding regarding capitalism and how private property works. In capitalism, competing ownership claims are settled by the state's willingness to use violence to exclude all but one claimant. If I lay claim to one of David Koch's mansions, libertarian that he is, he's going to rely on big government and its guns to set me right. He owns that mansion because the state says he does, and threatens to imprison anyone who disagrees. Where there isn't a state, whoever has the most violent power determines who gets the stuff, be that a warlord, the knight, the mafia, or a gang of cowboys in the wild west, either by vigilantes or the state. Property rights rely on violence. Private property is derived from self-ownership. If you own yourself, then you logically own your labor. Same way if you own a car, you own the ability to use that car to drive around. Logically, this means that you own the fruits of your labor. If that labor happens to be an apple, then you own that apple. If the labor happens to be Apple Incorporated, then congratulations, you own Apple Inc. When you attempt to squat in Coke's mansion, you're assuming ownership over Coke and his labor against his will. So yes, morally, he is justified to kick you out by force if necessary. You're aggressing against him. If you disagree, then surely you must not have a problem with me going over to Salon's offices and claiming them for myself right now. Oh, and there's this distinction of personal property versus private property that's insanely self-contradictory and it makes no friggin' sense. Won't even entertain that with the response. Capitalist economies are based on free exchange. Yeah, pretty much. Private property and free exchange. That's how it should work. Not really a misconception about communism, though. Come on, Salon. This is your second point, and you've already forgotten your original intent. However, this bit claims that capitalism originated when peasants were deprived their lands by medieval lords, making them rely on markets for survival, even though their citation is a book that I'm pretty sure they're misinterpreting. The article goes on to claim that once cities came about, people were forced into the dregs and the slums, and were made to work or die. Yeah, compared to what? Were farmlands and the hard labor associated with maintaining a farm place of huge infant mortality and an almost complete lack of civil or commercial services to speak of? Was all that preferable to cities that much? This agrarian ideal is the same nonsense that gives us things like the noble savage, where everything was good and wonderful and beautiful, but for evil cities that made everything smelly and nasty and gross. If urbanization was so bad, why did people flock to them voluntarily if they were able to live just fine on substance farming? Even that boss, the apparent victor in a free exchange, isn't free. The market places imperatives on the ownership class to relentlessly accumulate wealth and develop the forces of production or else fail. Yeah, that's called economic growth and progress. That is a good thing. Capitalists are compelled to support oppressive regimes and wreck the planet as a matter of business, even as they protest good personal intentions. Jumping the gun a little there. And that's just the principle of the system. The U.S.'s particular brand of capitalism required exterminating a continent's worth of indigenous people and enslaving millions of kidnapped Africans. And all the capitalist industry was only possible because white women, considered the property of their fathers and husbands, were performing the invisible tasks of child-rearing and housework without remuneration, three cheers for free exchange. <sighs> where do I start? An economic system can't exterminate people. African Muslims enslaved Africans. Capitalist America fought a civil war to end slavery. Women were never property. That's absurd. The resources and protection a wife gets from their husband is their remuneration. Get your facts right, Salon. Communism killed 110 million people from resisting dispossession. These guys really make my point for me here. Their argument comes down to, oh yes, 110 million people did die under communism, but for most of them, it wasn't because they resisted dispossession, so that makes it okay. It was just things like political purges and mass famine, as long as it wasn't for resisting dispossession. Capitalist governments don't commit human rights atrocities. Ugh. First off, 
A capitalist government is an oxymoron. Communism, on the other hand, is a government system in an imperialist world-dominating ideology that pretends to be an economic system. Comparing capitalism to communism is like comparing apples to oranges. But what's interesting is that they want to blame the free market for world hunger. Apparently, if someone is starving in a third world country that doesn't have capitalism to speak of, it's still capitalism's fault. Even worse is that they want to blame weather-related deaths on capitalism. No, really. The 100 million deaths that are perhaps most important to focus on right now are the ones that International Human Rights Organization DARA projected will die climate-borne related deaths between 2012 and 2030. <laughs> <laughs> right, because there's been zero bad weather until capitalism. 21st century American communism would resemble 20th century Soviet and Chinese horrors. Let's see communism's track record. Soviet Union, tens of millions of deaths. China, tens of millions of deaths. Cuba, millions of deaths. Cambodia, a million deaths. Help! arrogant do you have to be to try an idea that has resulted in hundreds of billions dead and still think that you, yes you, have the silver bullet. You know exactly how you'll get it right this time and how to avoid these mass famines and mass purges. At this point, it's like rolling a six-sided dice and expecting it to land on a ten. Spoiler alert, it won't! Stop rolling the dice with people's lives, you arrogant totalitarian jackass! Communism fosters uniformity. Yeah, okay, uh... Who argues this is a point against communism? Call me crazy, but I would think that arguments such as Mises' economic calculation problem, or the whole causing the deaths of hundreds of millions to be a much more important point than conformity. Mr. Strawman, is that you? To be fair, the images of the conformist Mao suits and the collectivism do nothing to assuage this concern. Capitalism fosters individuality. Capitalism fosters individuality. Right. Capitalism is actually the one that fosters conformity, you peasants, because there's no mass production, brutalist architecture, or cookie cutter. Oh wait, there is. Communism's claim to fostering individuality is that a lot of artists are Marxists. You know what? You can have them. But when your Venezuelas, your Zimbabwe's, and North Korea start producing Shakespeare's and your Beethoven's, let me know. Yeah, this was stupid. The article was stupid. Written by Marxists with the privilege of never having to live under Marxism. Communism is an evil ideology and must be destroyed for all time, ideologically. What do you think? Which one of these points was the most ridiculous? Anything you want to add to what I said? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.